What is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm very, very excited for the next couple videos that you guys are about to see because it was just Lake Trout Opener or Trout Opener in general in the Minnesota area. And my friend Dustin and I decided to come up to Ely, Minnesota to do a little bit of fishing. For the next three videos, we're gonna be spending it up here in the wilderness, in the boundary waters, in the middle of nowhere. And our journey is gonna start here at Timber Trail Lodge. Now, these guys were nice enough to let us stay here and you guys should definitely check them out in the link below. Beautiful area, I'm about to give you a tour of where we're gonna be staying. And if you guys wanna come here in the summer or if you wanna come here in the winter, this is definitely the place to book. They got a nice lodge over there uh, where you're greeted very nicely. They have everything you'll need. And then they have a bunch of different places and cabins to rent on this lake. This is Farm Lake, I believe. And it is beautiful up here, absolutely quiet. And man, this is gonna be so much fun. So huge shout out to them. Make sure to check them out in the link below. So we drove in over there, that's the lodge. And then this is where we're gonna be staying for the next three nights. This is the Basswood cabin. And as I was saying, there's other cabins that you can rent as well. And then over there is the lake, that's Farm Lake. And this is directly on the lake. So it's super beautiful. And as you can tell up here, it is amazing. So much snow, so much quietness. This is gonna be awesome. The main target of species for this trip is gonna be lake trout. Now, we're gonna be meeting up with some very cool individuals that you guys will see in the next upcoming video. So if you guys are big trout guys, stay tuned for the videos. It's gonna be a great time. I love chasing after these fish. Last year was my first time ever catching one, but I really wanna catch one inland, okay? That's really overlooked, I feel like. I, I guess a lot of people are kinda like, oh, we gotta travel somewhere. We gotta, we gotta go to Fort Peck. We gotta go to the Superior. Uh, you know, you can just come in the freaking boundary waters or anywhere around this area and there is an abundance of these little critters that you guys can catch so i hope to document this really well and show you guys that this place has a lot to offer so i'm going to give you a little tour of where we're going to be staying uh today was just a travel day so we drove six hours over here from fargo and i'm going to just get into this because this is so beautiful got a nice little deck right here so you walk up this area and then in the summertime you know you can have a picnic Here's your neighbors you can say hi to. And then bam, there is the lake. Super, super cool. We may or may not fish it this trip, but it's nice to be on the lake. Over here, we got a little cooker. So if you guys wanna bring stuff to cook, you can definitely do that. You got canoes in the summer to bomb around in, which is super cool. And then this is the entrance and let's go inside. All right, so we just came in here and this is a very nice cozy cabin. I believe there is three bedrooms in this specific one, two beds in there, one bed in there, and one bed in there. So you can bring the whole family and have a grand old time. And a nice kitchen, a microwave, a dishwasher, running water. We brought some goodies to make while we're here. And the host actually left us some big fat espresso. Look at this, this is homemade by the owners here. They left us a little gift package, which we're definitely gonna get into. It looks super good. We got fishing blend, we got good morning ground. This stuff looks so good. It is called Gene Hicks Gourmet Coffees. Check them out in the link below. And then look at this bag. Oh my gosh, they absolutely hooked us up uh, fully furnished uh, they'll have stoves here where you can cook stuff and all the plates and stuff that you'll need pots pans etc and then inside the freezer or fridge we got some goodies in there and then obviously had to bring the pizzas we have a nice map of the area here on this lovely table we're staying right here that's us that little star and then as you can see all the other surrounding lakes which there's a ton of freaking lakes up here but we'll step over here. We have all our stuff thrown in here that we're gonna be using this weekend. A nice little wood stove, uh, two chairs, and a little love seat for me and Dustin to cuddle in later. And speaking of which, let's go check on Dustin. What up, dude? How's it going? Pretty good. How, nice how do you like the lodge? This is sweet. Have you laid in your bed yet? No, is it comfy? Yeah. So this is Dustin's little area, nice little room here. I, I really get the up north cabin vibes when I'm up here, which is kind of what you're going for when you're in this area. But we'll walk back out this way over here, thermostat, and then this is the bathroom. Hey, there's me over there. And oh, we even have a shower too, Dustin. We can shower together. Walking back out over here, more hangers and stuff to put our coats. And this is my room, the master room. And look at this. 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of room to sprawl out. And oh, I even have a nice little closet. Let me look over here. Oh yeah, good storage. I got some, the decor up here is on point. Oh, the twin bedroom. You wanna do the tour of the twin bedroom? Cause there's, look at all the space in here. I just don't have the bed space, you know? Dude, we could have packed the boys in this weekend if we really wanted to. But we don't have any other people that would wanna come, huh? No. So that's a little tour of our cozy cabin. As I was saying, guys, if you wanna stay in one of these or one of the other cabins here on the lake, check them out in the link below. But for the remaining of the night, I think we're just gonna hang out, uh, maybe cook a pizza, eat, relax, and then rest up. Because for the next three days, we're gonna be chasing after the lake trouts. And we gotta get a good, good night's rest and a good stomach full so we can bang that out in the morning. Tomorrow, we're actually meeting up with my good buddy, Steve Foss, which we'll introduce him later in the video. I just wanted to open up the video and show you guys this awesome place. But we're gonna get some sleep, get something to eat, and I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. What John meant to say is we're gonna go to the bar tonight, not get any sleep at all, and then wake up and go smash Lakers. Told you. Mistakes were made. The next day. Morning. Morning. Oh, good morning, everybody. It is currently seven, not too early in the morning. But this is early for me. I haven't like gone hunting in a while. That's really the only time I ever get up early. But other than that, I kind of like am lazy and sleep in. However, it's the next morning and Dustin and I are about to pack the truck and put on some according clothes and get ready for the day. We're about to go meet Steve, which you guys will see in a second. And I'm so excited. We're about to smash some Lakers, hopefully. <sighs> Let's get it. There could be Lakers anywhere, John. Well, folks, we have officially made it on the ice and we're trying to make it out to the spot. Right now, there's so much snow on top of the ice, it makes it hard to get around. There's also a good layer of slush. So Steve is driving ahead of us, kind of creating a little road for us, a little two track to follow. And uh, he's struggling right now. He's currently stuck. He's digging out himself. Uh, this is gonna be very interesting. As you can tell, it's not gonna help because we woke up this morning and it was snowing. We're supposed to get like six inches, but you know, that's not gonna stop us for trying to get some lake trout. However, it may just take a little bit to get to the spot. Oh yeah, Steve, give her hell. Hell yeah, brother. Moments later. All right, everybody, we just made it out to the lake and we got everything set up, did that all off camera just so we could get it done very efficiently. And let's go meet the special guests. First of all, this is what we're dealing with. We had to trudge through all that stuff, pretty thick stuff. The Tacoma handed her well. And then Steve's Ram, that thing is a trusty looking machine. That thing ain't getting stuck, boys. Check that bad boy out. And then the Eskimo 650 Outbreak is making its Boundary Water debut. I'm super excited to be fishing out of it today. And man, does it look good with the background. This looks awesome. Oh God, he's already jigging, huh? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm Ooh. calling your fish in for you. Hey, thanks bud. And then, special guest of the day, Mr. Steve Foss. Why don't you tell the camera what you do? Well, I, I guide for all species up around Ely, Minnesota, right on the edge of the Boundary Waters uh, Canoe Area Wilderness. Uh, my special, you know, fascination is lake trout, and the lake trout season opened up here just a couple days back. So once lake trout opens, I, I basically say goodbye to all other species. And from the middle of January all the way through the end of March when the season closes, it's just lake trout all the time. You know, I've got a website, fossguide.com. Uh, my phone is, you know, it's 218-235-1147. That's with me all the time. It's my mobile office. So texting is, is great. I'm on Facebook, Steve Foss Guide Service on Facebook. So you can messenger, you can go to that page and see rates and all the information and, you know, hundreds of photographs of, you know, people holding trout. Um, and get, get a hold of me through that page as well. So 
all the normal ways so there you guys have it he will be linked down below you definitely got to come out here and do it uh, i was telling the camera steve that you know i feel like a lot of people think when they think lake trout they're like lake superior or like they got to travel like really far but i think a lot of people overlook the boundary water area or just the inland kind of like trout fishing there's some really good fishing to be had you know yeah. so that's why if you guys want to get into it steve is an awesome person to get you you know on the fish and teach you a lot about this species so we're going to start fishing today like i said we're in the eskimo we got two holes steve's going to be overlooking us and teaching us how to catch these fish but other than that guys the next time i see you hopefully we're gonna be hooked up don't even have to pick up my feet oh. Woo. well we've been jigging for probably about roughly 20-ish eh, minutes or so I haven't really marked anything Steve says it picks up later in the day but right now we're going to set up some tip-ups so we have a better chance at catching some fish and Steve he does it a particular way and I'm excited to show you guys so I do things a little differently with tip-ups than a lot of guys do I want the tip-up to be the highest point around snowy day like this or any day when the wind drifts if you were like most guys and they dig that down to the ice now that's the lowest spot and so you're out here every 20 minutes because that thing's getting snowed in if it's the high spot then it, it it doesn't drift in all the snow blows across it and you don't have an issue so hole covers play a big role so i pop that down i pack it in all the way around you know on a day like this we're getting a lot of snow, but it's warm, so, you know, it's not a big deal, but you see that that's now on a, a bit of a mound, so it's the highest spot around. And with a hole cover like that, we've been out here 25 below, and you maybe get a 32nd of an inch of skim ice at the end of the day. Wow. That's how the well that insulates. So now I take that out and maintain the, the seal a little, you know, I don't want to break that. This hinge spoon is outstanding. It's basically a one-timer if you do it slow enough. We're fishing what's basically an underwater ridge that runs a half mile under the water. Tops out in the 10 to 30 foot range, drops to 75 to 80 feet on both sides and off the end. So we're fishing with the shack on a lobe, a little lobe that is a point that sticks out from the point. And now in here, we're probably gonna be in 20 feet of water or less. So lake trout are in here too. You never know when lake trout go shallow, but they can go anywhere because they want low 50s or colder water temp. So depth doesn't matter for a lake trout in the winter. They literally own the water column. But this is walleye country too on structure like this. So this tip up in the shallower water will do double duty. We occasionally get big pike doing that too. So I've got all my tip ups labeled. I run three different types of presentations. I run a suspended bait. So a couple of these tip-ups, I'll run suspended bait, just live bait halfway down the water column. That yields lake trout now and then. And then on the deep tip-up, maybe in 70 feet of water, I'll lay a bait all the way on the bottom because lake trout hoover the bottom. Since this is the only precise one, you know, I want this 18 inches or so off the bottom, I need to set it. And, but I just, you know, I'm old school enough that I have the good old, you know, dollar fifty <laughs> depth bomb to do that lake trout aren't that particular you know you don't have to worry about whether you've got great shiners if you're a walleye guy or any of that kind of stuff and so what's mostly readily available are the small smaller suckers many many guys that i found out here don't run tip-ups they run and gun which we don't do we park on structure and we stay there and we wait them out so it's in your best interest to run tip-ups i think i already mentioned that 30 to 40 percent of our trout come on them but you gotta set the tip up the right way. You can't just plop it. You can just plop it down there and hope for success. But you know you might as well do it the right way. And so, you know, all the hours I've spent on this lake, you know, you get that figured out. All right. So the wind is coming from the south. So I'm going to put this on what will be the upwind side, and then it goes right back down into the seal that I've made. And I face this toward the shack. The last step. These are sensors, they're alarms, and these are made by Vulture Systems. 
So the sensor goes here and you attach it to the flag and when a fish takes it the flag pops and that magnet pops off the sensor and then a red light flashes and at the same time I get a signal. This is I've labeled number one and so when it when it pops up this number one will flash green and it will beep. So I don't have to watch for flags all day long. I can just ignore the flags until I get a beep. Dang, you're bougie, Steve. Well, that was actually really cool seeing Steve uh, set his tip up. I've never done it like that. I might have to steal some tricks from him because that seemed very efficient. Uh, I think the line alarm thing is really, really cool because he doesn't have to worry about looking outside. You just wait until you hear something and then you come out and catch a fish. But we're gonna set out some more tip ups and then get back to jigging. You guys stay tuned. We're looking to get a laker. Yeah, we went to that uh, that brew pub uh, yesterday to get a beer. Boathouse. Boathouse, yeah. Yep. yep. What, what, okay, what did you get? I had the pontoon cream ale. Oh, yeah. I had like um, a backwoods, the, the backwoods. The basswood brown okay. ale. Okay, got a fish. Oh, boy, we got a tip up, guys. Grab the bait. All right. <sighs> All right, boys, we got a tip up. Oh, oh she's spinning. Here we go. Yep. Do you want to take it for a while, Steve? Sure. Or? Yeah. Sure. Okay. The thing about on a windy day, you probably already know, is nobody stays downwind. Because they're going to get line all over them if they do. True. He's on there. You feeling not him? Not a big one. Not a big one. He's not a dink, though. Hope it's a Laker, guys. It is a Laker. First one on. This is a suspended live bait. It would only be, it'll only be a Laker. Okay. Crowd. Oh no, this could be the wall. I remember this is the one down oh, by the bottom. Oh yeah, this is the bottom one. Right. My guy Steve is hooked up. Oh, he's taking a little run at the hole here. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> not happy. Oh, Laker, yeah, look at nice that. Laker. Beautiful. About a pound and a half. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is our first Ely Lake Trout. These things are super pretty. The ones that Dustin and I were catching last year on Superior were a lot more pale. These guys have awesome awesome looking colors and wow what a beautiful fish would you say this is about the average out here well Steve, it, it's on the low side of average low we average side. about two to there are normal ranges about two mm -hmm. to twelve pounds so that's about two pounds oh about two pounds right there but is that going to be dinner for us or oh, what do you think be a wonderful dinner this will be a wonderful dinner yeah well that would be the first laker of the trip and man what a freaking beauty now dust and i have to get it done here comes one. All right. When you hit three feet, reel up, bro. Oh, God. Oh, my God. He's racing. I see him. That might be the same fish that came back, or it might be a new one. It might be a different one. You still there? Yeah. Okay. Go. Jig, jig, jig. Take it away from him. Disappeared. Okay. Keep going, though. Drop back down and I'll keep ripping. He chased me all the way up to the okay. second green line okay. up there. So he that's that's good. Dang. And I felt the pee. And then Dustin's like, I'm marking one. With a little bit of garlic. Mm. And then I grilled the, the fillets and olive oiled them. And then we drizzled that all over the fillets. Oh my god. And whoa oh, Merlot with oh, 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 oh. Tip up. Number one. Number one. Bring the bait. All right, we shall reel up. Guys, we got another tip up. Let's go get the tip up. I forgot the bait. Way to go. That could very well be. Oh, he's, he's spinning. Yep, get to it. That's you, John. Oh, God, he's ripping. Don't set the hook, just start pulling. And if he's big, let him take oh. line. Just I, like I any have fish. something, guys. Yep, just like any it fish. It feels uh, yep. pretty decent. Probably around the same size as that other one. He's running at me right now, like yep. really fast. Yep. There's the bobber. He took some line, boys. Oh yeah. He took a lot of freaking line. I'm hoping this is a laker. You get about six pound or oh. six feet, so he's right there. Yep. He's close. Easy does it. Easy, easy. Yep. Oh, there we go. A little bit. Hey, that's a nice one, yep. bro. He's about three pounds. Oh my. 
Well, yeah. there's my first lake. And lake trout are unique among the lake fish up here in that they can expel air from their swim bladder. Yep, that's right. So, so they don't, don't get hurt them when you... they come up 70 feet. Holy they can, they cow. They just come ripping up as fast as they want. Dude, that, that is awesome. That thing's beautiful. It yeah, is. This gorgeous. is really, really pretty. Yep, that's a lean Super variety, beautiful. which are, in inland Minnesota, they're pretty much all that type of variety. The okay. color can be different, but the fillets are a, a pretty Jeez. nice orange and they look like salmon. Right. Very subtle flavor, oh but they look God. like salmon. I mean, that fish is just so beautiful, guys. Nice. It's got that nice, like, bronze looking color, and wow. You can't complain about that, guys. There no, you go. That is a beauty. And they're going up in size, so the next one yeah. will be five, and the one after that will be 10, and then it'll hit 20. <laughs> That's and why I'm waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, just got back in the shack after catching that one fish, and that was a pretty looking fish, man. We're up to two fish now. Gonna have an awesome dinner, but we're gonna stay in here and keep jigging. I really, really want to see one of us catch one jigging. It takes a lot more skill than the tip ups, obviously. Uh, but I, I think Dustin can get, it, can get it done. I'm not sure about myself, but I know Dustin is about due here. I avoid the North, North Armand vehicles anyway for there's a while because... Here. What happened? There's one yeah, there's Dustin. Dustin. Okay. He's I see him down there. Yeah. Drop all the way to the bottom. All the way Coming to the bottom. Over to me. You're going to do that little bounce off yeah. the bottom. Everyone, every drop is going to hit the bottom when you do it. Bang, 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 bang. Just a little five, six inches. And let it hit the bottom every time. He, he's on the bottom near me. Okay, now reel it up. Stop. Jig. Nope, that didn't do it. No, nah, he's he, he's negative. He's yeah, so he negative. Was, he didn't even like chase or okay. anything. Right. Or to correct somebody to show them how to do something later on. Doesn't that just kill you though? You're no. like, man. No, I love teach. I mean, whoop. Oh. Speak in the f oh. I have Dustin. Number one. Number one. That's Bring the bait. Want to grab the bait though? Yeah. We got a tip up, Mr. Dustin. Let's go. Make me proud, Dustin. Same tip ups producing, man. Barely moving. We're gonna all right. So we just had the same tip up go up again for the third time, and it's slow turns like it's twitching. It's acting a lot more like a walleye than a lake trout. It is acting like a walleye. Lake trout usually head for the next county. Mm -hmm. Hey John, I'm gonna pull up a ten pound walleye. If it, yeah, if it's a big walleye, I wouldn't be mad about it either. <laughs> Nothing. Could be a could be a drop. Well, that is our first false flag of the day. Definitely uh, not a lake not trout. A, yeah, not a lake trout. We, we don't know what it is. You know, this could be Walter territory, maybe a seven inch rock bass, as Steve was saying. But that's the first one that wasn't a laker. My man Dustin needs to get one. But I, I'm looking out here right now. It is well, so it beautiful and it's very quiet. I keep saying that in this video. It's peaceful and quiet, but it really is. I mean, you. how can you complain about this? This is just so cool very hilly and the trees look awesome so we're gonna rebate this bad boy and continue jigging moments later yeah i saw it spinning and now okay. it stopped and it just twitched there it is oh okay. we yeah, just boy, dropped it back down that x walleye Ooh. we okay. just dropped it oh, back down and it's ripping grab it. grab it just take it yep there we go Yonder? that's crazy Good we deal. just literally reset it Decent. Okay. Sweet. What do we Pretty got, decent. Dustin? You're just about to get to the leader. There it is. Six feet. Right there. Oh, yeah. Oh! Another oh, three pounder. Oh, sheesh. That's a good one, Dustin. See, he's a little darker. Yeah. A little oh, bit yeah. darker. Try that is go. actually insane. We just had that false flag, dropped it right back down. Uh, not even a minute goes by and that thing's spinning and Dustin came over and caught it beautiful Laker Well, she started snowing again. We'll take another look at Dustin's beautiful Laker uh, Pretty much identical wow. to that one that I just That's caught sweet. too. Yeah. Yeah, we got the snow coming down on the jack. <laughs> Oh, this is really cool scenery guys. Very cool. Nice job, buddy. Oh, yeah much much later Woo! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is now about 3 30 and we have not marked a fish in a long time and have not had a tip up go up at all. So 
we're gonna pack up that's gonna wrap it up for day one we ended up with three keepers that we're gonna go home and maybe make tonight which i will film that if we end up doing that because i am super hungry dustin's super hungry and steve is also super hungry so we're gonna go do that and i'll probably film that process and then tomorrow we're going out with steve again which that'll probably be in this video i'm actually i don't know if it's gonna be this video or not but anyways i just thought to give you guys an update we're packing up right now and i'll see you guys back at the crib later that same evening oh bud bud oh my Goodness. That's some northern Minnesota goodness right there. Dude, that is some Minnesota goodness. Check it out, fellas. Well, guys, we made it back from the grocery store, and we actually picked up some stuff to cook the fish tonight. Dustin and I have not ate all day. Literally, I had a little breakfast sandwich. Dustin has had Powerade. That's it. Good and we bought snacks at the grocery yeah, store, right? We bought groceries that we brought grocery store snacks and got into some on the way home. So guilty as charged. But we're gonna make some lake trout. Just got done cleaning them. Can't show that on YouTube, but I can show that on Google and Uncut, which will be linked down below. Uh, but we're gonna cook up some fillets tonight and gorge ourselves with our awesome harvest. Ogres are like onions, right? Yup, they just got layers and layers, man. If I died and came back as a Shrek character, I'd probably come back as Donkey. I definitely agree with that. Do you know who, okay. If Colin Clary died and came back, he'd be Lord Farquaad. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. <laughs> Love you. Who would you come back as? The dragon, so we could be dating. All right, so we went to the store and we got a couple things. We got Parmesan style cheese. We got this random magic salmon seasoning. Uh, Dustin and I spent hours looking for seasonings and this was the closest thing that we could find that we thought might work. It's a combination of a bunch of different things. Uh, I don't know, hopefully it's good. And last but not least, we got the rosemary. Looks delicious. Uh, I cut up an onion already, which we're gonna put in there a little bit. I have butter and I also have lemon so I could squeeze the lemon on there. But first we're going to season this bad boy. I ain't gonna lie, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're gonna put some butter on there. Uh, no clue this is gonna turn out good. We got garlic, herb, and butter. Is it pronounced herb or herb? Herb. Herb, okay, garlic and herb butter. We're gonna put some of that on here. Hopefully it's not too garlicky. That's or I mean, I'm okay with it, but ah, we'll see. Oh, yep, that's some potent stuff right there also. Yeah, guys, if you're gonna cook these in the oven, you have to do skin on. We're talking to Steve today. Sometimes he fries his, obviously you would take the skin off. Uh, but for these ones, you're gonna leave the skin on because when it cooks inside the oven, the juices and all the fat in there make it nice and good. So you leave them on. We're gonna put some of this butter, or not butter, lemon on here. Just gonna give it a good one of those. Fresh lemon and fish go together so well, man, so well. And then today we're trying something a little bit new. Got some onions that I cut up here. We're just gonna put it, just kind of put these on here, like just randomly, I guess. You can eat the onions if you want to, but it's more gonna be like, I don't know, kind of like the seasoning. It's gonna soak up everything nice, like with the butter. I think good it should flavor. be pretty good. Good flavor, yeah. So we're not gonna go too crazy on it. And last but not least, Parmesan cheese. Usually I use the one from Kraft because Nick Goslin from NB Edits makes it. However, they didn't have that here in Minnesota, so we're just gonna get some of this on there. You can use the real Parmesan and cheese, but I like using the fake stuff. I just, I don't know, I think it just hits a little bit different. Oh, Dustin, this is gonna be so good. So, oh, okay, there we go, nothing too crazy. Voila. Final product. Final product. Uh, we're gonna turn this to about 375 or I think. 
and then cook it for roughly 12 to 15 minutes. You just gotta keep checking on it. So we'll see you guys once it's done. A few moments later. Oh, oh God, boys. There we go. That's the finished product. And Dustin is FaceTiming his girl over there. What up, Sam? So for our side dish, we got these minute rice. Well, it's actually 90 second rice. Uh, Ben's original. We got the butter and garlic. The boys are trying to eat a little bit healthier. And we're going to dish this chot up and dig in. Oh, mamacita. We are about to go in. Oh, yes. Oh, sure my me. God, dude. Yes, Dustin, sure me, you should let me know how this is. Like, give me a little taste test here. Mm-hmm. That is really good. That is really good. Well, we had a little little chunky piece fall off here. We're, we're just going to go after it, guys. I mean, looks pretty flaky to me. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. I could have put... I was a little scared to put all that butter on there just because it was like that garlic butter. I, I definitely could have put more or I could, you know, smear this around a little bit more or melt some and drizzle it on there. But, wow. It, it tastes like, like rainbow trout yeah. to me. It doesn't taste like salmon because salmon, uh, I don't know how to explain the salmon taste compared to trout taste. I would say salmon's a little less fishy. Um, that you can, But like sometimes you want that fish taste and I feel like in this you kind of want a hint of it. You definitely get a hint of it. I'm, I'm going to try a piece right here where all of this goodness is, the butter yeah, and all that boy. stuff. Yeah. Okay. See? Way better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I got this, I just took a bite of this thickness right, mm -hmm. right in here, this whole big chunk at once, and it was like even, it was different mm. than... Wow, that was couple bites. 10 times different Yeah. when you take a bite of where the butter was sitting. I thought the, I thought the butter would kind of melt more around it. Uh, but it's it's a little splotchy in some parts, but we could fix it. We could just melt some, like I said, and drizzle it on there. Super good, super easy, and honestly, pretty healthy, okay? Not bad. So if you guys wanna cook lake trout, that's a quick and easy way. However, Dustin and myself, we're gonna gorge this meal and then go to sleep, not go to the bar like we did last night, okay? Three days later. Well guys, it is about three days later and I am now doing the outro for this video. Uh, what actually happened was we woke up the next morning and went fishing all day with Steve and didn't mark a single fish. Now, I didn't want to put that in the video just because you guys would get super bored and I don't know, you guys probably wouldn't even like that part. So literally we spent the whole day doing some fishing and not a lot of action. That cold front came through and man, it really did mess up the fish. I would say the highlight of that day was I made some burgers on the ice and uh, they were really good. So that was pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Huge shout out to Steve Foss and Timber Trail for sponsoring the video and helping the boys out on our Ely send. I have one more special video from Ely coming out uh, very soon in the next couple of days, which you guys can look forward to. But man, we had an awesome first two days. A lot of fun, caught some lake trout. That was my first inland trout in Minnesota and it was a good one. They're so pretty out there and it's just crazy to think that you don't, tra you don't gotta travel so far to catch those beautiful things. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and we'll catch you on the next one.